Acts chapter 21. Now again, according to these dates, could be right, could be off a little bit. A.D. 60, the book of, uh, or the epistle to the Ephesians would have been written 60 to 62. Uh, Philemon would have been written 60 to 62. And Colossians would have probably been written 60 to 62. So while Paul is, here we go with the next few chapters, Paul would be writing to the churches that he's already visited. Uh, about this date, the apostle Matthew dies in 60 AD. So you're going to, we've already lost Stephen. We lost James. Now Matthew has died. Now we're seeing apostles die off. We're seeing the scripture being, being written, not put out. I mean, these letters would go to the churches, but as far as where they went from there, would probably take a little while till we had the canon of our Bible. And it came to pass that after we have gotten from them, leaving from chapter 20, that would be the, the elders of, or the, yeah, the elders of the Ephesus church, we landed and we come straight course to Coos, and the day fallen onto Rhodes. And from thence onto Patria. You can probably follow this in a map somewhere. And finding a ship sailing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now, when we had discovered Cyphers, we left it on the left hand. So that would be they left Cyphers on the port side of the ship and sailed onto Syria and landed at Tyre. So we're north of Israel now along the Mediterranean. For there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And again, here the ship lands. Paul would get out. It's a seaport. He would preach the gospel. He preached the gospel on the ship. Sailors would hear. People were traveling all over the known world would hear. And they would take the message too. And we've seen this through the life of Jesus when the Magi came. When they left, well, guess what? They would take the story of Jesus. The infant born, king of Israel. And what happened? The, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch would take his message down south. If he would make a pit stop somewhere, he would tell him, hey, I met this guy, Phil. And he should, look, here's, here's the paper. Here's the gospel. Here is Jesus. And I got saved. I was baptized. This, I was just sitting in my, my chariot reading Isaiah, and the Holy Spirit sent this man to me. So you would see the gospel getting out down south. It's easy to tell your testimony. and But before warning, I'll tell you, if you tell your testimony, you will be called a liar by some. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Up is to mountain. Now, the first time Paul's warned is in 2024. This is the second warning. The disciples are telling the apostle, don't go. And the apostle is not listening to the Holy Ghost, chapter 20, and he's not listening to the disciples. I've sat behind a desk and told about, you know, they're not going to listen. Paul's not going to listen. His heart is so burdened for the Jews. And the whole and Satan knows that. And Satan's going to use Paul's love for the Jews to capture Paul. And yet the Holy Spirit is going to get Paul to Rome where he wanted him. But we're going to read that's going to cause many days of isolation, many troubles, many problems. The will of God will be done. Paul is not, uh, what should I say? He's, he's not defying God. He just has another agenda. And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us, Luke writing, us, on our way with wives and children. Till we, Luke is writing, we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. What is that? There's a prayer meeting. It's not in the building. They're on the shore. Rocky, waves, water, shipping, seagulls, some kind of seagulls. I don't know what kind of seagulls they have over there. Fishermen, they drop down and pray in public. 
And we had taken our leave one of another. We took ship, and they they returned home again. So Luke and Paul and the company are on a boat. We had taken our leave of another. We took ship, and they returned home again. We had finished our course from Tyre. We came to Phonemus, miss, and saluted the brethren. How you guys doing? What's going on? Nice to meet you. You got some new ones here. Good to see you're still serving. Keep on. Let me give you a little gospel. Let me tell you a little things that's going on. And bode with them one day. And tell them what happened on the trip. Give them a little rest. The next day, we that were Paul's company, including Luke, departed. And came unto Caesarea. Now, let's go back to chapter 8, verse 40. I love how God works in this family, how things just seem to be by the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to say by chance. But Philip was found at Astus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now go back to 21. We came unto Caesarea, and we entered in the house of Philip the evangelist. There he is. There's the Philip that witnessed to the Ethiopian. He went on a journey. He came to Caesarea and he became evangelist. Which was one of the seven. There were seven evangelists in this area. Philip was one of them. What's his job? He doesn't have a church. He goes around strengthening the churches. He goes around preaching. He's not a pastor. He preaches in pastor's churches. He strengthens what the pastor tells the people throughout the year. He reports what's going on in the mission field. He reports what's going on in this. It'd be great, you know, we're in a little state of Florida. If we had some evangelists come and say, you know what, you don't believe what's going on in California. You realize that uh, uh, North Carolina, they're on fire for the Lord. Or whatever state. Man, they're just defying. They're arresting Christians who are preaching on the street. This this state, there's no churches. This state is on fire. This part of the country, they would give you reports of where we don't go. And evangelists would come in, and without the pastor's help, without the pastor convorcing him, he would come in under the fire of the Holy Spirit and preach, and the people say, hey, that's what pastor preached last year. That's what pastors got finished preaching. That is something I needed in my life. And they would confirm the word of their preacher preaching in their church by coming and preaching the same word. That's the job of evangelists. Which one of the seven and abode with him. So Paul stayed with Philip. And the same man, Philip, had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Uh-oh, they're telling the future. They're not preaching. They're not pastoring. But they're teaching. A woman can tell the future. What's the future? Believe on Jesus Christ, thou shalt have life. Reject Jesus Christ, thou shalt go to hell. And as we tarried there many days, so he stays with him many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, oh, Paul water girdle, and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. This is the third warning. And Gentiles would be Rome. So the Holy Spirit speaks to Paul. The brethren speak to Paul. And God sends this prophet to Paul. Now let's watch. And we heard these things, we, both we, Luke and the company, and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem four times. Uh, Paul, can I speak to you? What is it, Luke? I don't advise we go. Other Christians, Paul, please don't go. Stay here. Stay with Philip. Man, listen, I'll give you some lodging. We'll, we'll get you out other places. You heard what Agabus said, didn't you? I heard what he said. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep? They're weeping. And to break my heart. Paul's heart is broken. 
For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. That's not what Agabus said. Paul, aren't you listening? Aren't you the world's greatest Christian? Aren't you listening to what the Holy Spirit just told you? Told you not to go. And he says, you're not going to die. You're just going to go in jail in bonds and chains to where I want you. Paul, oh, I'll go there to die. So don't go be mocking. Oh, I'm ready to die for God. That's exactly the words of Paul. Why? Because he wants to get those Jews saved. He wants to witness to them. His heart is desired to go and preach to them. He got mad with them and said, yeah, yeah I, I'm cleansed. I'm going to go to the Gentiles. But you guys, you know. When he would not be persuaded, we cease, saying the will of the Lord be done. So how's that about the Apostle Paul with Philip, with Luke, Agabus? Okay, fine. May God get you to Rome where he wants to and stop kicking against the pricks, I guess you would say here. He's not going to listen. Free will, Paul. You've been warned four times. After those days, we took our bag our carriages and went up to Jerusalem wasn't supposed to there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Manson Mason of Cyprus an old disciple look at that he didn't retire remember a disciple Paul Luke Peter Jane are not going to call you a disciple if you're a couch potato Christian they're going to apply that title. Luke is going to write that title about this guy if you're disciplined and serving. I guarantee Luke and the Holy Spirit be very careful with that word disciple. And when you go back and read what Jesus said to be taken to be a disciple, you got to carry your own cross. You got to forsake your family and friends if they don't love Jesus. Now you ain't carrying a cross. You ain't forsaking anybody who, who does not love Jesus. Don't you be imply that name to you. The old disciple with whom we should lodge. Oh, there's a place. He's going to give him home. He's going to give him a place of rest. And when we come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. The brethren. Now the trouble begins. And the day following Paul went in with us unto James. That's the other James. This is not the James, the brother of John. He he was beheaded. This is James, the Lord's brother, who was at head of Jerusalem, the church. And all the elders were present. When he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God has wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. He reports back to James. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what, hey, Ephesus has, has a beginning. Galatia has a beginning. Man, I got my butt stoned at, at uh, Thessalonica, and they're still serving the Lord. I met a man named Timothos, Timothy. Man, that guy has been brought up by his mother and his grandma to serve the Lord. Barnabas. I heard of a man named Apollos. He was a little bit bad at the beginning, but Apollos and Priscilla has helped him out. He's going up. I ran into Philip. He's doing good. His daughters are serving the Lord, James. That's what's going on. And when he had heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto, unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews that are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. <clears throat> now we got a little problem here. We got saved Jews. They're zealous of the law. They're abiding by the law. And we say we, we're not under the law. We're under grace. But when before we read any further, where are these Jews living? Jerusalem. They've got to obey the law because of the people around them who are not saved in order to, to witness to them. If I were to become a missionary to Israel, 
If the Lord called me, which he's not, but I want you to go to Israel. I want you to establish, establish yourself in a Jewish city. I want you to be a missionary, which you can't. They, the, the Jewish government will not allow you. You definitely have to go to the government. But if the Lord said, I want you to establish to be in a Jewish city right now and be a, a missionary there, I would have to give up all pork. Never again in that ministry would I, even if I came home on a furlough, somebody might know me from Israel. Say, hey, I saw that guy eating a pork sandwich the other day. I've got to abide by the law. I can't get out in my car on the Sabbath and go driving around because by the law is I wasn't supposed to and not supposed to. And I'm supposed to be a good testimony. to. Now, listen, it's not my salvation. But like James would say later on, it's my conduct after I'm saved. So these Jews who are saved have to live some sort of law, not for salvation, but for the testimony of the brethren. I mean, their brethren, their fellow Jews, their family, their old cold workers. Zealous, they are informed of thee. You, they've heard about you, Paul. That thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Uh, the Jews here are got a little problem with you, Paul. They are you, they have heard that you're telling the Gentiles don't follow the law of Moses, don't follow our customs. Do you see what Paul's teaching? You see what the Jews are keeping? We are now at a complete switch. We are moving away from the law for Gentiles. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for there will for they will hear that thou art come. They're gonna to want to hear from you, Paul. They want to hear you speak, but they know what you're teaching. Do this, do therefore this that we say to thee. For we have four men which have a vow on them. This would be a, a Jewish vow, custom. Maybe according to Numbers 6, 1 through 7, maybe. Take them, these four men, and purify thyself with them. According to the Jewish law, you've been with a bunch of Gentiles. And be at charges with them. Let them take care of thee. You take care of them. Charge it. That they may shave their heads. That was in the law. And all may know that those things. Whereof they are. They were informed concerning thee. Are nothing. Paul I want you to take these four men. I want you to do what the law tells, tells you to do. This chapter can be quite weird. I want you to prove to them, Paul, that you're a Jewish person. I want you to prove to them that you'll follow the law. But that thou thyself also walketh orderly and keepeth the law. Look at that. That's James. Paul, they heard that you're, you, you're an outlaw to those Gentiles, take these four men. They have designed themselves. They have dedicated themselves to God. I want you to go with those four men. I want you to show those men that you are not an outlaw. And some Baptists will say, well, that's sacrilege. We're not under law. You're not living amongst Jews. Remember what remember what Paul did with Timothy, whose father was a Greek, his mother was a Hebrew? Come on, Timothy, we got to get you to have an operation. Why? Didn't you just tell me I'm to, I'm to forbid myself from things strangling from blood of the fornication and I'm not supposed to be circumcised? Yes, but why would you want me circumcised then? Because we're going to de deal with Jews and they know who your father is and they know that you have not had that operation. Now, if you're going to talk to Jews and they know who you are, you better follow what they believe. See, there's a thing when you become a missionary. If, if God has ever called you a missionary, 
Now, I'm not telling you to be unholy. I'm not telling you to be worldly. I'm not telling you to be unchristlike. But you've got to adapt to some of their ways. You can't walk into a tribe in Africa wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt. They won't accept that. You got to find out what clothing they expect you to wear as an outsider and how long it would be for you to even dress like them. You got to eat their diet. You got to do their customs. Now, if they have a 13 year old son of the tribe at 13 years old, he's supposed to go out and bring home an antelope. Your son as a missionary, when he comes 13 years old, has got to go out there in that in that forest and get himself an antelope or whatever it is. That's not worldly. That's not going to kill you. That's not going to put you sin. You just got to do some things according to the people where you're going to. You, you, let's say God calls you to China, okay? You better learn Chinese. Don't go over there and say, well, press one for English. They'll boat your butt out. You can't go to North Korea and say, well, I'm going to open up and build a church right in the center. No, they're going to put you in consecration camp. you got to have an underground church. you got to realize that sometimes we've got to live to the responsibilities of the world's ways and customs in order to preach Christ. Paul will say in Romans 13, we are to obey the powers that be. Now, if you go to a country as a missionary, and they have certain rules and regulations about their wives. Your wife better be adhered to that law. I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you don't like it. If you don't, you are a poor testimony of Christ to that nation. Now, Peter and John has told us, listen, if God tells us, we're to do what God tells us over man's law. If you're going to go to a nation that says adultery is okay. No, no, no. You can't do that. The Bible says adultery is not okay. It's a sin. If you go somewhere where you have to kill somebody, no, that's murder. God said, no, cannot kill. God said that, New Testament. But if you go somewhere where they don't eat pork or swine, there's nowhere in the Bible God, God says, you know, you take the food that you get and thank God for what's been given to you. But there's no rule that says, thou shalt eat pork. Thou shalt dine on steak. Thou shalt have the best clothes. There's many places you're going to have to be poor just like them. There's some places you got to be undercover. And they're saying, listen, I want you, Paul, to go with these four men. I want you to prove to them that you're not being you're not being an outlaw. What I mean by an outlaw is you are obeying the law. Not for salvation, but for your conduct. You need to go over to James, who wrote James, and read, I think it's chapter 4, 3 or 4. I'm not under law. The Bible says I am saved by the grace of God, but if I was in my parents' house and I disobeyed my parents, that would not be a good testimony. They would not get saved by my conduct. If I go to jail and you read my name in the newspaper for murder, that's not a good testimony. That's not a good testimony to my church. That's not a good testimony to my family. That's not a good testimony to Jesus Christ. They're not, James is not asking James to do it. James is not asking Paul to do anything illegal. But he's saying, listen, this is what these people believe. As touching the Gentiles. Which believe we have James has written, we already went through it, concluded that they observe no such thing. Gentiles are not under the law, but the Jews are kind of under the law in Jerusalem. How's that? Because that's where they're li living. If some of these Jews would go to Asia, they wouldn't be under the Jewish law no more. They would be under the customs and the ways of the people they go to. That Ethiopian eunuch was set as an apostolate to the Jews. He was set free from those laws, trusting in Christ to bring the grace back to uh, the queen there. He does not have to go to Jerusalem three times a year anymore. But as far as the Gentiles, we believe, which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing. 
save only that keep themselves from things offered to idols, number one, and from blood, number two, from strangled and from fornication. That's the standard we set for the Gentiles. We are not setting the Gentiles under any Jewish law or anything from Abraham. Paul is telling the Gentiles, you don't need to be circumcised. But if you're living in Israel and you're saved, unless you want to be a total outcast and do nothing for God, you better circumcise your child eight days. You're not to offend the people. And yet you're not to offend God. If you can, off if you cannot offend the people, I mean, if you, I'm trying to say this right. Do not offend the people and make sure you're not sinning against God. I hope I said that correct. But if you're going to sin against God and offend the people, well, offend, offend the people and don't sin against God. Peter and John were beaten and jailed. They told him, we don't want you to preach that name no more. But God said, go in all the world and preach. So we better obey God, and if we obey God, we're going to take the consequences. They may kick us out of the nation, they may cast us out, or they may beat us. But we're going to obey God. As far as before, if there are taxes, we're going to pay those taxes. If we can't eat this, we're not going to eat this. If we can't go here, we're not going to go there. If we can't do this, we, we're not going to do it as long as it does not sin against God. This, what Paul's going to do, is not going to sin against God. You know what Paul's major sin that we did not forsaken, that we've forgotten about, is he's not obeying the Holy Spirit. That's the sin of Paul. But to sit with these four Jews and show that he is upright, that's not a sin. Then Paul took the men. And the next day, purify himself with them, entered in the temple. Well, he's been going to synagogues left and right. Now he's in the temple. To signify the accomplishments of the days of purification, unto that an offering should be offered for every one of them. So he's doing what the law says. He's doing what the custom is. I'm going to purify myself. And you know what Paul's probably doing? He's not doing it for the Jews. Lord, for a testimony to you, I'm going to purify myself for you, God. I'm going to do it for you. It does not violate anything you said. Yeah, Paul, what about you? You're not supposed to be there. <laughs> Stop reminding me about that, Lord. You know, Paul, you wouldn't be in this situation if you had listened to me. Lord, stop telling me about that. I, these people, I love them. More. I know you love them, but this is not where you're supposed to be. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia... When they saw him in the temple. So the Jews of Asia. This had to be one of the three times of the year they had to come. For the males to come. Because the ones he's been meeting in Asia. Here they are now in Jerusalem. Yes, Pentecost. Pentecost. So. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're correct. Pentecost. So here they are. They come down. They're, they're doing everything they're supposed to. And guess who they see. And when they seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were aged, when they saw him in the temple, Paul stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people, and the law, and this place, and further has further brought Greeks also into the temple, and has polluted this holy place. For they that had seen before him in the city of Termothrus and Ephesians. So we're going back to Ephesians. This is where they've seen Paul. When they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. They think that Paul has brought some of the Greek, uh, excuse me, well, Greeks, yeah, but Gentiles into the temple. He did not. He walked in there with those four Jewish men, no one else. There were five people that walked in that temple, him and four Jewish people, men. But they have stretched the story that he's brought in Gentiles to defile us. 
So it would even underestimate that that Ethiopian would probably wouldn't be able to go in, in the temple. He would probably have to make the journey to Jerusalem and have somebody do it for him, maybe. Or they're just making a big deal out of nothing just so they can arrest Paul. That could happen, too. They made a big deal about Jesus, and they couldn't find him guilty at all. But isn't it funny how we're in a reverse here? Four times people, people, Jesus has been declared innocent by Pilate and Herod, and yet he dies. Paul has been warned four times not to go, and now he's getting himself in trouble. And all the city was moved. The city, what city are we talking about? Jerusalem. And the people ran together and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, that's what Paul was doing in chapter 8 and 9. Tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was up in an uproar. There's a Roman soldier who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. When they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beaten of Paul. They're beating Paul outside the temple. He is being beaten by the Jewish people. In come the Romans. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. So Paul's arrested. Adabus, you're a prophet. And some cried one thing, some another. He did this. Well, he did that. No, he did this. No, he did that. No, it was this. I'm not. Among the multitude, and when he could not know certainly the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when, when he came unto the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. Paul is in captive by soldiers because of the people. Violence of the people. Notice that word. Had those Roman soldiers did not get sent by God, Paul would have been dead. Out of the will of God, remind you. This is not where God wanted him. For the multitude of the people falling after crying, away with him! Almost like crucify him. And as Paul was to be led unto the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Can thou speak Greek? Art thou the Egyptian which before these days made an uproar and leads out unto the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers, murderers? Who else was a Jew thought to be an Egyptian? Moses. Moses. That's kind of interesting. How they would stake Paul for an Egyptian, I have no idea. But evidently there was an uproar by some Egyptian. And he was led out in the wilderness. <laughs> but Paul said, I'm a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city of Susia, a citizen of no mean city, well known. And I beseech thee, suffer me, allow me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, He allowed him permission. Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when he was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, And we leave off Paul to the Lord willing tomorrow. Paul is on the castle stairs. Okay? He is sought license to speak to the people. Now, as I can speak personally, I've always been taught, you speak what you know. People will come up to me when I'm preaching on the street and say, that's not Bible. Jesus would never do that. Paul is about to have a street preaching ministry here. 
He's on stairs and he's going to speak to the people. And guess what he's going to speak about? Jesus. So Paul is out of the will of God. God spares him because had he been dead, had he been killed, he would have died out of the will of God. So we're not done yet. 